Good evening, this is Pastor Dominique from Evander Revival Center. I want to thank you for taking the time to listen to a word that's going to encourage you today. Today I'm in the book of Daniel. I've been meditating on the book of Daniel and I want to share a thought with you from the book of Daniel in the Old Testament. So we are reading in Daniel chapter 1 verse 8 to 20. And I want to share these verses with you. And in this passage of scripture, we find a principle that if you live it out, it brings two blessings upon your life. And I believe God wants to bless us. I believe God can bless us in the midst of all the chaos, in, midst, in the midst of all the uncertainty that we are seeing taking place in the world today. I believe that God wants to bless his children and I believe the blessing of God upon his children will testify to the world that God is real. I mean, what greater testimony is there than us being prosperous, blessed, going out and just having the peace of God that surpasses all understanding. And obviously this comes through salvation in Jesus Christ. So I want to share with you tonight. The principle that is found in this passage of scripture and let us look at this passage of scripture and then I'm going to unpack it and I'm going to give some background to it and then I want to share with you what the Lord shared with me. Now Daniel chapter 1 verse 8 to 20. But Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's delicacies, nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore he requested of the chief of the Enoch that he might not defile himself. Now God had brought Daniel into the favor and the goodwill of the chief of Enoch. And the chief of the Enoch said to Daniel, I fear my Lord, the king who has appointed your food and drink. For why should he see your faces looking worse than the young men who are your age? Then you would endanger my head before the king. In other words, the king would have my head if you do not look well, if you do not look healthy. So Daniel said to the steward whom the chief of the Enox had set over, Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, please test your servants for ten days and let them give us vegetables to eat and water to drink. Then let our appearance be examined before you and the appearance of the young men who eat at the portion of the king's delicacies. And as you see fit, so deal with your servants. So he consented with them in this matter and tested them 10 days. And at the end of 10 days, their features appeared better and fatter in flesh than all the young men who ate at the portion of the king's delicacies. Thus the steward took away their portion of delicacies and the wine that they were to drink and gave them vegetables. As for these four young men, God gave them knowledge and skill in all literature and wisdom. And Daniel had an understanding in all visions and dreams. Now at the end of ten days, when the king had said that they should be brought in, the chief of the Enoch brought them in before Nebuchadnezzar. Then the king interviewed them. And among all of them, uh, among them, all, none was found like Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. Therefore they served before the king, and in all matters of wisdom and understanding, about which the king examined them, he found them ten times better than all the magicians and astrologers who were in all his realm. Now in this passage of scripture, we see how Daniel and his three friends, now their Jewish names were Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, but we know them better as uh, Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego. Now Daniel and his three friends, who were Jewish young men, teenagers that were brought from Judah to Babylon as exiles, are now in Babylon. Uh, what happened was, in Daniel chapter 1, we read of how King Nebuchadnezzar came to Judah. Judah had been rebelling against the Lord. And he came and he invaded Judah. What he then did was he 
conquered Judah, and then he took the best and the brightest of their citizens, people that had wisdom, people that were attractive, what they would usually do, the Babylonians, when they invaded a land, they would take the wisest men and they would take the most attractive woman back to the capital, Babylon, the land of Babylon. And there in Babylon, they would be trained up for civil service to be used to uh, build infrastructure for the kingdom of Babylon, uh, used to stand in the service of the king, used for... Um, leadership and administrative roles in government so this is what happened they were brought back and daniel and his three friends these are four jews in a foreign land and they are in a culture that's, that is egocentric that means it's a very selfish culture it's all about ego and while they're in this culture there is idolatry taking place there's idol worship so you can just imagine these three Jewish boys or four Jewish boys come to this heathen culture, this wicked land, and they are used to living a very moral lifestyle and they come into a very immoral culture. And they have to all of a sudden submit under these heathens, these people that weren't Jews, these people that did not worship their God, Jehovah, but worshipped idols. Now, these were difficult circumstances for Daniel and his friends. And I say that because oftentimes we can feel like we are in difficult circumstances. You know, just think about your work circumstances. Just think about what's happening in this nation. We can feel as if, you know what, what hope is there? Look at who is in power. What future is there for this country? Look at what's happening at my work. I'm working for a difficult boss. I'm working in a company that it seems I'm limited in how far I can progress. But yeah, we see Daniel and his three friends taken as exiles against their own will, forced into a very perverted and very um, carnal, idolatrous culture. And all of a sudden, in this culture, they have to live. They have to live. And not only that, they still got to keep their faith and still worship God. I don't know where you feel limited in your faith, as if maybe there are barriers or there's opposition to your faith. Take encouragement from the book of Daniel that God is sovereign. He is sovereign above all things, all people, all rulers, every king, every president, every boss, God is sovereign above all of them. And that's what the book of Daniel is based upon. The theme is God's sovereignty. That in spite of man's ways, in spite of um, what man thinks he has or does not have, God is still sovereign. So yeah, Daniel and his three friends, they are taken into Babylon. And we read in Daniel chapter 1 how they have to stand in the service of the king. They have to go into training. The king assigned them to be trained and to be educated in the way of the Babylonians. Uh, they would have learned science, astrology, they would have learned mathematics. They would have learned Babylonian literature and language. So yeah, they are being immersed into this foreign culture, this heathen culture. And they have to learn the ways of the Babylonians. They have to be trained up in the service of the Babylonians. Now the whole idea is for three years they've got to be trained up. And in this three year period, while they've been trained up, while they've been educated... After a three-year period, they would be equipped to serve the king. They would be equipped to be civil servants. They would be equipped to exercise administrative roles over the government of Babylon. And the Bible says that assigned to these people to Daniel and his friends, and not just them, many other young men with great intelligence, 
with royal and noble backgrounds from different lands, from different kingdoms that were brought to Babylon. Amongst all of these, the king assigned food, delicacies, and wine. So he gave them delicacies and wine. A daily portion of meat and wine were allocated to these students. The Bible says regarding this matter, Daniel purposed in his heart, the Bible says, that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's delicacies. In other words, he made a decision in his heart that he was not going to partake in the delicacies of the king. He was not going to eat of the king's meat and he was not going to drink of the king's wine. Now, just give you, I just want to give you some background to this. It is widely believed that the meat had pork, which would have been forbidden by Jewish law. And this would have been against um, Daniel's beliefs and his values. And Daniel, as we read the book of Daniel, we find that he's a man of principle. He's a man of conviction. And he purposed in his heart that he will not eat meat that was forbidden by God's holy law. Not only that, he would not drink the wine of the Babylonians. Because the Babylonians offered up their wine to their God. And they believed that if you drank that wine, that you would become wise and intelligent because it was blessed by their gods. And Daniel just decided he's not going to touch the wine. He's not going to eat of the meat. In other words, Daniel was determined not to transgress God's holy law. Think about this. He's far away from home. He's far away from Israel, from Judah. He is an exile in a foreign culture. He's in a worldly, carnal system. And he makes a decision that he is not going to defile himself. He's not going to give in to the pressure of the customs and the culture that he is surrounded with. It would have been very easy just to indulge. It would have been very easy just to consume. But Daniel made a decision. He's not going to indulge. Now, we as a church, as a body of believers, we are busy in a time of fasting and prayer. We are consecrating ourselves by setting food aside, by spending time in prayer, by calling out to God for 2023. And I know many of you are praying, fasting, seeking the Lord with me. And like Daniel, you've purposed in your heart that you're not going to indulge. Why? Because you're seeking God. Daniel just made a decision. He made a decision before the temptation came. He made up his mind. I'm not going to consume that which is an offense unto God. You see, there is power in a made up mind. If you make up your mind that you're going to serve God, if you make up your mind that you're going to live a life of no compromise, if you make up your mind that you're going to be obedient to God, that you're going to live a life of obedience to God's word, there are blessings that come upon your life. And I will show you in this passage of scripture, there are two blessings that come upon your life. There are blessings for the un uncompromised life of the child of God. When you just decide, I'm not going to compromise. I'm not going to do anything that can grieve God. That can bring displeasure towards God. I'm not going to live in a way or uh, do anything that can be a transgression or a violation of God's word. There are blessings that automatically come upon your life. You see, if you go to the uh, dictionary and you define compromise, compromise defined is accepting standards that are lower than desirable. Now, God's word is a standard. And when we compromise, it means we are lowering our standards to conform 
to the world or to conform to the pressure of the world. And when we lower our standards, what begins to happen is we begin to compromise. But Daniel was not going to compromise. Now, I want to say something. God was speaking to me today and it just came up in my spirit. God is not looking for perfection. God is not looking for perfection. But God is looking for faithfulness. Let me say that again. God is not looking for perfection, but God is looking for faithfulness. Think about it. Not one of us are perfect. The Bible reminds us of that fact in Romans chapter 3 verse 23 when it says we've all fallen short of the glory of God. So none of us is perfect. But what God wants is faithfulness. God wants us to be faithful to what he has called us to. He wants us to be faithful to his word. Daniel was faithful in this regard. He was faithful and committed to keeping himself undefiled in a heathen culture in difficult circumstances. And this was a risk, if you understand the context to this, for him to say that he's not going to eat from the king's table could have been seen as an insult to the king and the king could have taken offense to it. And Nebuchadnezzar could have had him beheaded for it. Not just him, but also his three friends, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Because they themselves also decided that they were not going to defile themselves. What risk are you willing to take to obey God? What risk are you willing to take to maybe fall out of favor with man so that you can keep favor with God? In fact, that's the very first thing that took place after Daniel decided that he was not going to defile himself. The Bible says in verse 9, the Bible says these words. Listen to this. Now God had brought Daniel into the favor and the goodwill of the chief of Enoch. God brought Daniel into the favor and the goodwill of the chief of Enoch. In other words, Daniel found favor in the sight of the chief of Enoch, the person that was placed above him to train him, to educate him by the king. Daniel found favor. Think about this. God gave favor to Daniel through an unbeliever. That tells me that God can use unbelievers to bless his children. Don't count anybody out. God can use a Muslim. God can use a Hindu. God can use an atheist to bless you. This man was a heathen, yet he looked favorably upon Daniel. You see, when you decide not to compromise, when you decide that you're going to serve God and you're going to do what's right, Favor comes upon your life. Nowhere in this passage of scripture can you read where Daniel went and prayed and asked God for favor. The Bible says God gave him favor through the chief of Enoch. In other words, if you just obey God and you choose not to compromise, there are certain blessings you don't even have to pray for. God automatically begins to bless you. Don't you want favor? In your workplace? Don't you want favor in your relationships? Don't you want favor where you go at church, in social life? Don't you want favor in every realm? It starts by living an uncompromised life before God. Now, let's read uh, what the Bible says. And I want to speak to you about living uncompromised, meaning not lowering your standards. In John chapter 15 verse 7, Jesus said this, If you remain in me, and my words remain in you, you may ask for anything you want, and it will be granted to you. What Jesus is saying is that when we come to prayer, and we ask for anything, he will grant it unto us. That's like an open check. But the catch is the prerequisite. 
What is the prerequisite? What is that that we have to do so that we can get answered prayer? He said, if you remain in me and I, my words, remain in you. So if my word is in your heart and you do what I say, in other words, you can ask me anything and it will be done for you. Now, like I said earlier, God's word is his standard. That's his standard. And we need to meet his standard. We need to obey his word. So if we obey God's word and we, we meditate on God's word and God's word is in our heart and we wholeheartedly follow God's word, Jesus said, whatever you ask for in prayer, it will be given unto you. You see, this is, this is where holy living is required. Now, I want to be very clear when I speak about holy living. I'm not talking about um, you doing funny religious rituals just so that you can look or feel holy. Holiness is devotion unto God. It's being devoted unto God. It's coming into right standing before the Lord. It's living righteously before God. So you come to God through the blood of Jesus, recognizing that you are a sinner, that you need a Savior, and you come to Him through the blood of Jesus, in right standing before Him, and then you choose. In fact, it's your desire to please Him. That's when you begin to live holy. Now, God calls us to live that way. In fact, He says in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 15 to verse 16, but now you must be holy in everything you do, just as God who chose you is holy. For the scriptures say, you must be holy because I am holy. God won't ask you to do something that you cannot. Whatever God requires, He empowers. So if God requires something from you, He will empower you to do it. Throughout his word, if God gives you a command, if God gives me a command, he will give us also the empowerment to do it. So God won't ask you to live holy if he won't empower you to live holy. That's why I always say it is impossible to live the Christian life without the Holy Spirit. You and I need the Holy Spirit. Let me tell you something. Without the Holy Spirit, this flesh, me, your flesh, your carnal nature... Has got a way of dominating. Has got a way of overruling. If you don't believe you've got a carnal nature, just go and get stuck at the traffic department waiting to renew your license. Or just go and get stuck at the Department of Home Affairs trying to get a renewal on your ID or getting your ID. Uh, just go and stand there in line. Then you will see quickly you've got a carnal nature. But when we are called by God, He equips us with the Holy Spirit. Acts chapter 1 verse 8. You will receive power from on high. The dunamis power of God. It's the power to be effective for God's kingdom. So, when we live holy, when we obey God, go read Deuteronomy, and Deuteronomy chapter 28. For the first 13 verses, we read of all the blessings that come upon the believer who is obedient unto God. The blessings. In other words, you don't even have to pray, God bless me. You will automatically be blessed. Do you know that you can position yourself to be blessed in 2023? Whenever I teach about being blessed, it always fascinates me. People want to know. How can I be blessed? And there are people that will even ask me, Pastor, I want to have a blessed year. What must I do to be blessed? It's quite simple. Obey the Lord. Obey the Lord. Do what His Word says. I have to laugh at myself because yesterday I started reading a book just outside of my normal prayer and Bible study. I was reading a book about biblical prosperity. And it's a thick book. 300 pages long. I purchased it. It came through uh, yesterday. It was dropped off here by our house. And I was reading. And I was just uh, 
reading this book and it's about this pastor speaking about biblical prosperity, how God wants to prosper his children. And I'm telling you, I've already read a good amount of pages in that book. And as I'm reading that book, the thing that the theme that he keeps repeating is you've got to obey God. You've got to obey God. You've got to be obedient to God. You've got to seek God. You've got to obey God. It's just the constant theme is obedience. And as you obey, you will be prosperous. As you obey, you will be blessed. You would think that he would give you keys how to get money because that's what we all want. We want keys. We want those practical steps, so to speak, on how to be blessed when it can't be any more practical than obeying God's word. Just obey God's word. Just be obedient. In fact, Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 13 says these words, God speaking. If you listen to these commands of the Lord, what are those commands? The word of God. If you listen to these commands of the Lord, your God, that I'm giving you today, and if you are careful to obey them, the Lord will make you the head and not the tail, and you will always be on top and never at the bottom. What an awesome promise from God's word. If we would just obey God. God says, He will make us the head and not the tail, and we will always be on top and not at the bottom. Well, let's look at some scriptures surrounding favor. It's the first blessing that comes upon the believer when we live uncompromised before God, when we choose not to lower our standards. And that's what Daniel received. He received favor. Psalm chapter 5 verse 12 says this, you bless righteous people, O Lord. Like a large shield, you surround them with favor. Wow. In other words, God will surround you with favor like a shield when you are obedient unto him, when you choose not to compromise. The Bible clearly states God blesses righteous people. God doesn't bless everyone. The favor of God is not for everyone. For those that compromise... The favor of God is not there for them. You can, did you know you can pray and you can call out to God? And if your life is not right before God and you know there's things that aren't right before God, your prayers are hindered. In fact, uh, let me read, give you a scripture regarding that. Proverbs chapter 28 verse 9. The Bible says, He who turns his ear away from the word of the Lord... Even his prayers are an abomination unto God. I don't want my prayers to be an abomination unto God. And I'm sure you don't want your prayers to be an abomination unto God. Let me give you another scripture. Proverbs chapter 3 verse 1 to 4. Listen to this. My son, do not forget my teachings and keep my commands in mind. Because they will bring you long life, good years and peace. Do not let mercy and truth leave you. Fasten them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. Then you will find favor and success in the sight of God and humanity. The Bible is promising us that when we are obedient unto God and we treasure his word and we choose not to compromise, the Bible says here we will find favor and success in the sight of God and man. Wow. There, right in the Bible. We can find favor in the sight of the Lord. Well, there's a second blessing that came upon Daniel. And it's the second blessing of the uncompromised life. The second blessing that came upon him, and I want to read it, is found in verse 17. Listen to this. And God gave these four young men. That's Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. God gave these four young men an unusual appetite for the understanding, every aspect of literature and wisdom. And God gave Daniel the special ability to interpret the meanings of visions and dreams. In other words, these, these four Jewish boys in this heathen culture received divine wisdom. And Daniel had the ability to interpret dreams wow that's powerful they had supernatural ability daniel to interpret dreams with that wisdom from god 
Wisdom from God. Again, you cannot find in this passage of scripture where Daniel prayed for wisdom. God gave him wisdom. And I believe if he had defiled himself, if he had eaten the meat that was forbidden by God's holy law, if he had drank him from the wine that was offered up to idols, I don't believe he would have received the favor and the wisdom that came from God. Listen to what the Bible says. Proverbs chapter 1 verse 7. The fear of the Lord is the foundation of true knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and discipline. What the Bible is telling us, when we have the fear of the Lord, and this is not speaking about fear in the sense of the spirit of fear, because the Bible says quite clearly in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7, God does not give us the spirit of fear, but this is the fear, the reverential respect of God. You don't want to do anything because you are afraid of bringing displeasure to God. It's that kind of reverential respect. When you've got reverential respect unto God, then you find the true foundation of knowledge. Knowledge comes to you. Don't you want wisdom for finances? Don't you want wisdom for your health? Don't you want wisdom for your family relationships? Don't you want wisdom for business ministry? It starts with the reverential respect of God, where you respect God. Daniel had respect towards God. And God blessed him with wisdom. Jesus himself said in Matthew chapter 7 verse 24, Anyone who listens to my teaching and follows it is wise. You are wise when you follow the teachings of Jesus, when you follow the word of God. You want to be blessed in 2023? Purpose in your heart, like Daniel, that you're going to live without compromise. You're not going to lower your standards. You're going to be obedient unto God's word. Two blessings come upon your life, favor and wisdom. Well, eventually Daniel, in this book, if you read further, in Daniel chapter 6, we read of how Daniel became distinguished. Listen to what the Bible says in Daniel chapter 6 verse 3. Then this Daniel distinguished himself above the governors and satraps because an excellent spirit was in him. And the king gave thought to set in him over the whole realm. Daniel comes as an exile, basically as a prisoner to Babylon. But through making the decision not to defile himself, just making that one decision that he's not going to compromise, he becomes so blessed by God with favor and wisdom that later on he becomes promoted in the kingdom of Babylon to become second in charge only to the king himself, Nebuchadnezzar. You could actually say that Living an uncompromised life, it brings promotion. That could be the third blessing. Promotion. Daniel went to new heights. He was blessed in a supernatural way. He was promoted above all his peers. Why? Because he chose not to compromise. I want to quickly give you the definition of distinguished. Because the Bible says Daniel was distinguished. Distinguished defined is being very successful, authoritative, and commanding great respect. Wow. Daniel did not have to do anything to earn it. God gave it to him. God blessed him with it. Because he chose not to compromise. I want to leave you with this one scripture. And then I will conclude. Romans chapter 12 verse 2 says these words, Don't copy the behavior and the customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. Don't you want to know the will of God for your life? It starts by changing your thinking. It starts by renewing your mind. It starts by not looking to the world and following the patterns in the culture of this world. But rather obeying God and allowing His word to dictate your life. I leave you with that thought. Let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I pray for every person that is watching right now. Lord, help them, help me 
to live lives that are uncompromising before you. Lord, that we will not lower our standards to fit in with the world, to give in to the pressure of society or to give in to temptation, but help us to live in a way that is pleasing and acceptable unto you, my God. I pray even in this time of fasting and praying, Lord, that you, Father God, would give us the strength to endure. And as we purpose in our hearts not to indulge like Daniel, I pray, Lord, that you would bless us in a supernatural way with favor and wisdom. I pray that for every person right now, for favor and wisdom as they choose to live before you holy and righteous. We give you all the glory and honor. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your love. And we thank you for the good God that you are. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch. I just want to come on right now tonight to share a word with you, to encourage you in your faith, to leave you with the thought. And let the Holy Spirit minister to you through this teaching. I want to quickly greet everybody that's online. Anna Stienkamp, it's so good to see you online. I trust that you and Stoney are doing well. Lente for re, you started with your fast, and uh, I just pray that God will give you the strength to endure your fast. I trust that you are doing well, Lente. Mandy May, it's good to see you online. I trust that it's going well with you and Leon. God bless you. Antoinette, I heard that you also starting with your fast. God bless you. I believe God will bless you with supernatural wisdom and favor as you fast. Diane Burning, I know you fasting. I know you're busy seeking the Lord, and I believe that God's going to bless you and that God's going to do something mighty in your life and in your business in 2023. And please know that I'm praying for you, John, Nicholas, and Natalie. God bless you. Pastor Yolanda van Vieren, it's good to have you online. God bless you, Pastor. I trust that you and Gert are doing well. I trust that um, Caleb and uh, Jaden are doing well. And please know, Pastor, I'm praying for you. You must have a wonderful evening and send regards to your husband. Elian van der Westeisen, it's good to have you online. God bless you. It's good to see you online. I trust that you are doing well right now. And uh, yeah, please know, Elian, you are in my prayers. Erika Pretorius, it's good to have you online. God bless you. Jana Spies, it's good to have you online. Goeie aunt, Jana. Marty Miller, goeie aand. It's good to have you online. I trust that you had a good holiday with your children. God bless you, Marty. And I trust that you are safe back at home. I trust it's going well with Oma. Marie Wilder, it's good to have you online. God bless you. Tilda Creel, it's good to see you online. I trust that you and Hentius are doing well. Sonica Boa, it's good to have you online. Well, thank you to all of you that have taken the time to watch. Please look out. I will have another live video on Thursday night, 8 o'clock. I just want to keep sharing the word of God to inspire you, to encourage you. This is Pastor Dominic. I'll be signing out. God bless you. Have a good night's rest.